This is Ministry Eviction Server gameplay. I am Laura Fetikus. In this game, I played a match against Zanzibarzi, and this is going to be a real interesting one since this is going all the way to late game. Big forts, uh, giant army attacks against big forts. Uh, we're going to see some free for all action since there are five players in this game. It's not just me and Zanz. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So, start out with, I hate my spawn hex, it's awful. The, the coal spawns are bad and I've only got two water, so I've gotta use that water to get enough coal to even get my first silicon out. Uh, and that's gonna make me feel bad and pessimistic the whole time, cause a bad start uh, against Zanzibarzi, it's gonna be hard anyway, and that didn't help. Uh, but I can at least Set up my first daggers, get some more space nearby. Uh, I'm making a go of it. Uh, on this day, we had played three games in a row, and I had a bad spawn pretty much each time. Uh, so I was just frustrated and going for it anyway. Uh, like here, combustion power. I don't want to make combustion power. I want to make steam, but I don't have any. Look, look, it's right there. Just let me get a little closer. Uh, maybe I should be blocking off the semi-daggers that way. Um, as far as the map is concerned, I'm in the upper left corner. I've got Fuggo below me, about three hexes. Uh, he's not a big threat, but if I don't pay attention to him, he could get me. Uh, Dyslexic is below him. And then on the right side, Zanzibarzi has a lot of free space to his own. So right off the bat, he's got a good spawn as far as player placements. Me, I'm stuck without graphite because I had to use it on mechanical presses or mechanical drill, or pneumatic drills early on. Uh, so I'm desperate for graphite. I'm like stringing together crap to try and get it out. Here it is. Uh, I'll be able to pull some overflow out of that because that silicon extractor or the silicon scam only needs three of those drills with water uh, and it's got four going so I can pull a little more out. Yeah, there's the map. Uh, Dyslexic's got a really good spawn as far as open space to expand into also. Uh, he'll be able to make a go of it. Me, I'm waiting on graphite. But those daggers I sent out I did send them out, right? Hey, pay attention to those. They're busy. I think I lost one of them. So I'm only doing two daggers taking a hex and then I'll slow things down. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at that coal I can't have yet. Come on, come on. Not even much uh, titanium either, but you know, without the earlier stuff, that's not going to do much to me. Uh, with my desperation, I'm also feeding a couple extra loads of lead into my first dagger factory since I know I've got some uh, slowdown I need to make up for. Now the actual six smelter when I get to it. The time for it isn't going to be half bad, but I am going to be missing up the bank of those other early scams that I couldn't get uh, as soon as I wanted to. And given the bad power situation, since I don't have water for steam gens, I'm actually leaving the combustion generators on these. So this thing is actually going to only run for those smelters and the rest of the coal will run out but it'll contribute a little bit to power. Uh, take advantage of the self-powered design of those things. When I do get better power, I can go back and delete those and it'll increase the efficiency. And I think I'm gonna get to that pretty soon. Uh, I know I've got neighbors. I know I need power. So I'm going for the uh, early eight dagger core and load factory. So once I get the power taken care of, two steam gens, expected to power another six silicon smelters and the dagger factory. So 
wire that up, and then get to work on those things. Uh, a nice aspect of being stuck with this start is that I've got uh, a better bank of copper and lead than I would normally. I can still run it out, but it takes longer to run out than before. I get a little further before it happens. Uh, I had to settle for an extractor on that. Terrible. All right. More silicon coming in. Uh, I'm not going to make the power plant or the daggers. I don't remember. Power plant. So, no more of this thirsty for water. I'm just going to settle the early power. Uh, this is kind of pushing it on graph reserves. Uh, but if I can at least finish this, then I can leave things to build up while I'm working on the dagger factory. And it just barely pulls out. All right. Power problem fixed. I want more graphite. And this is the, I want graphite and I don't have any. So give me a skem that doesn't need graphite to build relative to something that's got multi presses in it. it. Does have the extractor, which you know, I'm stuck with that. Uh, if I do have water nearby, I try to take out that extractor and just feed water directly into it. And that uh, makes me real happy with those. Mm. Yeah, forgot about Titan. Four drills on Titan isn't gonna hold up at this point, especially since I did the power plant already and that number of uh, air blasts and belts. So give me more of that while I'm working on the, the thing here. If things were on schedule, that factory would be done at seven minutes. So I'm a bit late, but I'm not super late. And there is at least space separating me from people. So it's not absolutely critical. I would have liked to have done one of my other rushes against Zanzibarzi because I know that the way he plays is if you let him get his economy boom, then there's not really anything you can do about it after that point. So you want to hit him early. Uh, if it was one versus one with him, I'd really want to rush. But you need an opening hex that'll support that. Uh, with other competent players on the server, that makes rushes less viable since, sure, you can knock out one person, but then the rest of them come and get you. Uh, that sort of pushes towards more defensive, cautious, economic, Kind of gameplay. All right, took off the combustions on that silicon. My daggers are coming out. Uh, their job is to open up space while I'm busy working on the economy. Uh, in general, I'm not real happy with the titanium spawns. There's not a whole lot uh, of places where you can put more than one air blast pulling titanium. Uh, you want those, then you put an overdrive on them, dome them, something like that, get a bit more efficiency. But I'm going to be stuck with lots of single air blast titanium. Uh, yeah. So, weird decision from Fogo down there. Uh, he blocked off his dagger expansion in my direction. Uh, I don't know why he did that. That's a mistake, because he could totally put pressure on me and distract me and hold me back. Uh, but instead, I get to expand right up to his border and put full amounts of schematics uh, versus if you're bordering someone, you want to take the ground in between so that you have space to put up defenses, uh, because if your border ends up being a hex with economy in it, then you have to make uh, scrappy, awkward defense that's got to work around whatever economy stuff is there. Yeah, 
So I got my mid-sized power plant, and then I went platinum. Then I can go start using overdrives, and that also opens up the option of cyclones, uh, which is a prerequisite for when I get to surge, and then I can actually start putting real forts down. Uh, I also want some more silicon and graphite to feed into polys. Uh, I am slower about making polys than other people. Uh, you need both enough economy to build at whatever speed and you need the polys to do it. So getting polys real early doesn't necessarily do great, but I'm gonna get them at like 14 minutes or something, which is probably too late. Uh, all right, here's some scrap. So Fogo sees me come in here, he sends an attack out. Uh, with a combination of these arcs and pulling the dagger bullets towards my Omega, I end up just barely saving that core. Uh, and then I can put my defense up and be secure from this direction. Oh, he's not going to do high tier stuff. He puts those duos down to attract, like if I was trying to building versus building him, they would go after those duos and his Lancer would be more effective, but I don't want to actually get into a fight like that. I just want this border to stay here and not move and not worry about it. Uh, and he's going to let me do that. Uh, probably not a great call on his part, but that works. Okay, now I want the big power plant since I've got bank to actually build it. Uh, and the nice thing about this is I don't have to worry about connections at all. It's all core unloading and those sand drills in it. Uh, and when I get phase, it'll start making more power. So at this point, whenever I get the chance, I can drop my phase factory and start getting benefit immediately in addition to you know, banking up phase. Okay. A, yeah, so I need the power from that and I need to make sure I don't run out in the meantime. So I'm isolating some stuff that would be drawing power otherwise. At this point, I would really like to have polys and I should, and I know it, but I need the power before I actually put them out. If I get the opportunity, I probably want to build into that hex directly to the right of Fuggo. I don't need it, but it'll be good to hang on to and slow him down a good bit. Uh, I think he's just focusing on dyslexic more because well, he's got a better shot against dyslexic. Yeah, I'm going to be skirting low on silicon production for most of the next few minutes. Uh, I'm not really setting down any unit factories besides those expansion daggers at the polys. Uh, but what I will need it for is when I put surge down. And I'm going to need to start saving up for domes, and I'm going to need the ammo for decent forts. Yeah, so that's what I use for two crucible. Uh, the thing I like about that is it's actually a mirror. I can double the size of it if I want, if I've got you know, the arrangement of lead and a space of two neighboring air blasts that can do sand. And it's also got in uh, a feed where I can put phase into it, get even more if I want. So I can put a little more attention to that and get more efficiency. Yeah, so that is in preparation for, I want to put the surge down. Uh, I have had an extra thorium air blast for a while, so I don't have to worry about running out of Thor when I set that down. Yeah. 
still paranoid about Titan. All right, yeah, let's start making that search. And I'm starting to get polys out, so things will speed up. All right, now the expansion that I've done with those daggers, I want to actually consolidate. Uh, if I don't put any forward defenses out, then the same stream of units coming out of Zanzibar's base are just going to trade it, take it back, and if he's got a bigger stream, then he'll push ahead further. Uh, so these are specifically to stop streams of crawlers and daggers that tend to get released. And I also want to be extra secure against anything coming from the south. I'm not taking time to go see what Fogo is doing. So this is, might even be total overkill. I do have to be careful that Surge Factory, like with the turrets and the bridges loading Surge, uh, I can drain the Surge pretty easily, dropping a lot of forts, even those sort of little beginner ones. Yeah. All right, so that phase goes down and it will automatically start going into these power plants. Uh, so that's a boost to power that I don't have to think about. And this is being placed in preparation for doming. Uh, I'm not a dome everything person, but one thing that I think definitely you want to dome is uh, Thor and Titan air blasts since you can just bank up a lot more of that with a lot less attention. Uh, and since they're spread out more, you really benefit from the range of the dome relative to putting phase into regular overdrives, which I tend to go for a lot more often than the other higher ranked players uh, because it's easier to just embed it in the schematic and not think about it. Uh, I embed it in my big silicon and my big power plant, and a bunch of other things. I would have liked to have held that tile, I just quite, just barely missed it, but I do have space here to put defense. And this is preparing for what I know is going to happen eventually, these bigger forts. Uh, you don't, don't build up your defenses to Stop what you see is happening right now. Build it in to stop what you know is going to happen next. Uh, he's not going to stick with just crawlers and daggers left on attack. He's going to move up to Zenith's coming through. And those have a chance of pushing through these uh, just two cyclone bits. And I, I know the attacks are going to get harder moving forward. Or silicon, out of silicon. Uh, and I'm adding the extra shield onto all these because I know that Zanzibar has a habit of sending horizons. And if those can bank up, uh, it's like just one alpha strike will take out a core, uh, even crash damage. Ugh, crash damage is gonna be a bitch this game. Hey, all right. So there's that dome I planned. Uh, I'm not actually in any position to build it because all my surge is going into ammo. Uh, maybe I should be putting plast into those at first if I want to be setting up domes, but that isn't what I've done yet. Yeah, there's the there's the zenith I expected. So strengthen that a little bit more. Uh, I am now at risk of him doing a command center rally to the south of there and coming in behind that. Uh, so I want to extend some defense to the bottom. I don't like extending the wings of my forts towards enemy held space. Uh, that tends to go badly for attacks. I try and point the wings towards either 
completely empty space or space that I have secured. Uh, there's also the risk of him just leaving lots of light stuff on attack permanently and keeping me at a permanent uh, ammo shortage. Like if I run out of ammo and the turrets run out of what they have stored up, then T1 stuff will chew through these forts. Uh, so I need a lot more surge production than I would settle for normally. Like a lot of times, one factory will be enough, especially if you're not getting constantly attacked. Uh, a little problem on that last fort is some of the shields that I lay down are blocking uh, a liquid tank that's supposed to be holding cryo. So that's going to be a little lower efficiency than it would be otherwise. Oh well. Uh, Fugo, he's gone. Alright, well, I better try and take some of this space. Uh, it would have been a good plan to try and go a little further down here or notice this earlier, but I don't really have, I haven't done significant army production yet to actually mount a real assault down there. And if I had, I'd probably still be focusing on Zanzibarzi because of sort of the free-for-all politics that are always in play. Like you, you, in general, you want to be attacking the strongest player. Uh, and that is going to be Zanzibarzi in this instance. Uh, you know, focusing on weak people to rule them out is going to let the stronger person build up. You want the stronger person fighting on multiple fronts against everyone to try and hold them in check. Uh, the trade-off there is that taking weak people gives you more space to work with. And I'm going to run out of space in this game. Uh, I'm going to be forced to play denser than I like to or am good at, and it's going to hold me back. Uh, but without being more aggressive to the south, then that's what I'm going to get stuck with. Yeah, I'm still hurting on Surge. Especially with, I've got some forts that look like they're completely empty and not loading up at all. Uh, I need to get more of this out. And the knock-on effect of that is that's going to pull a lot of copper and lead uh, more than my usual. Oh, all right. Go CC. I built, I took down my spawn CC, I put it down here, I've got it on rally. Uh, ground units are now going to where it used to be and not where I want it. So for the rest of the game, ground units are dead to me. I can't control them. I can't rally them. Oh well, I'm going to have to go completely for air to do any sort of uh, tactical army manipulation. Which sucks because I like using some, you know, I like quasars, uh, I like uh, scepters and reins. Uh, a lot of times you can get a good attack against a fort by concentrating those. Uh, but that's all, that's ruled out for this game. Yeah, so boost, the, boost that surge production. Now I'm actually making some positive like I can actually bank up some surge now so that's that's a good sign uh, also again I'm gonna end up with a lot of boosted poly factories this game and it is gonna make a difference because there's gonna be some arrangements of attacking and my defenses where I've got polys flying over his forts back and forth between my things that need rebuilt and without replenishing those I would be dead in the water, but I'm going to be able to actually keep up. Yeah, I don't like that wing. That wing should be pointing to the left and not down. That would be good to attack. I don't have units yet, though. So, let's see. My bank is... Decent, not great. Yeah, I know that I'm out of space and I need to go denser. So the first step there is taking down everything in my initial spawn. This is all 
low efficiency, cheap, not producing much. I can get rid of all of it and use all this space. Uh, I'm gonna use it for unit factories. I need to start actually building some army now and pushing back. All right, that map check shows he's building an army and rallying uh, and I need to start working on that. So that army, those air units, I don't want them going to my uppermost fort. That's the weakest. Uh, yeah, he's gonna... So I put some generators down to try and pull units away. Uh, I put a lot of blocking walls up. And actually, that attack should have worked, except for those. Uh, the poly saved me there. Uh, since unit AI priori prioritizes shooting units instead of cores, uh, the poly is going back and forth between this fort and the one above put them in the perfect spot to draw the zenith fire away from the fort. So that's probably what kept me alive there. Uh, losing that fort probably would have put me out of the game. Uh, I lost a lot of polys in the process. Not great, but I'm going to have enough production of that that they'll be replaced decently well. So now I'm actually going to start building the unit factories since I put out that fire, I can go back to doing what I want to do. Uh, so I'm going to go for quads and zeniths. Uh, not quite enough phase banked up. Uh, so I'll drop another phase factory. He has left his stuff on attack, so I don't have to worry about concentrated attacks. Uh, but that's going to go back to depleting ammo and constantly distracting my polys, uh, replacing the, the, the cheap chopper cover walls I always want enemies shooting at walls first Polly's rebuild them that'll be fine if I had megas uh, they'd be boosting the effectiveness of that stuff power pull in the way get out of there fixed. So hopefully, the, the, the hope at this point is that I can get that backline unit production up and get a nice attack stored up before Zanzibar Z decides to upgrade his forts. So if I can get that build up without him seeing it, then I'll be in a better spot. Uh, that's the hope. Oh, this is Meow's Thor factory. It's the one Sigmatic that I stole from so well, took. Eh, you can't really steal schematics, you can just borrow them. Uh, but yeah, I took this from someone else because the design is wonderful and they make so much power uh everything else i make my own schematics forts economy all of that uh, yeah he's still on attack yeah he's more worried about dyslexic at this point i think he's working on unit factories down there to Go through his defense. His de his baseline defense is easier to break than mine, so that's the place to get space. And he's not expecting any pushback from me, so he feels comfortable not paying attention to me, which I would like to punish. But uh, I've got a lot of things to build before I get to that point. I've got to actually finish the quad factory, get the zeniths out. And I need to get my platinum and silicon production high enough that I can actually support those things being domed. Like these, these platinum factories are specifically supporting the T4 production. Uh, I don't think I had oil patches sitting around. I didn't notice any oil patches sitting around to take advantage of this. 
Maxed out on polys. That's nice. Uh, I think I'm also maxed out on monos at this point. Which puts me at something like, you know, 120 monos, and they're still not quite keeping up with the amount of lead and copper either going into surge production or into building. Uh, and at this point, there's not a whole lot to do about that. Like, I'm not going to drop air blast lead and copper drills, uh, and they wouldn't even do much difference at this kind of burn rate. Yeah. Now I'm more paranoid about dyslexic to the south. Just some extra insurance. It still looks like he's he's busy with his antibody, which is exactly what we want. And I am happy to let him go and this be a static border while I worry about Z. Yeah, he's got some rallies building up which I need to go poke at. Uh, I don't want that to get attacked, so I'm taking out the bait generators so that the air units in that command center will head to the fort below this instead, uh, which is a, a better position. He doesn't actually seem to have his full armor production rallying to there, though. I think that attack might actually be intended for going after dyslexic, but... I kept myself safe too. Uh, some flares went into the backfield, but luckily I've got random daggers back there to actually take care of those before they do any damage. And if they did shoot something down, uh, the polys would rebuild it. So I don't have to worry about that. If they got a core, that would be bad. I don't have menders or shields on the core, but. Fort Polly's aren't going to take out a court when there's all that other stuff to shoot at. 30 minutes and I start building an army. That sucks. I mean, should have been doing that 10 minutes ago. But I'm focused on building a good perimeter. This is, this is trench warfare. That's what they say. Uh, strong forts lined up on all the players' borders. And you gotta break the forts with a rallied army before you can actually get into the meat behind it. All right, so he's got quads. Uh, that means I want more shields. I also want tsunamis to try and push them away from cores. I don't want the crash damage on the cores or on the containers around the cores. I need to work on not having containers in my forts. Uh, a lot of the forts that I lose are because something crashes on them. It blows up, the surge blows up, the core blows up, I lose the whole thing. Uh, but I see that rallying. I'm going to boost things down here. He uh, tends to rally at one spot, and I build against that spot, and then he will pull to another command center, uh, which I need to be on the lookout for. So. He might try and take that group north or not. Uh, my north from the previous attack felt pretty strong, so I am able to get away with trying to get some more economy out. Uh, T4 production also uses a lot of titanium, relatively. So, and if I run out of titanium, that also risks... Uh, putting out my power too, since uh, that titanium is feeding into my power plants to make the cryo for the diff gens. All right, this bank feels safe enough to put the dome on these factories. Uh, I would like to also be making pulsers for the shields, but because my ground units are neutered due to the ghost CC, uh, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna go that route. All right, here's the other half of that silicon factory. Uh, making things denser since I'm out of space. Ooh, RTG power. Uh, with all the excess platinum production to power the T4 factory, I've also got the slack to go for these RTGs. Yeah, there he is trying to set, that's, that's a big army. And he's trying to set that up for an attack. Uh, 
I don't want it going around the side of these forts. I want it to go against the front. So that's why those gens are there. Yeah, here he is. He's trying to go to the north. Instead, he hits it face front on this. The shields hold, the quad bombs are blocked, and the quads crash in decent spots. Uh, I did add the overdrive boost to that, so it's getting a bit more efficiency, and I managed to actually hold off that attack. Great. Yeah, green's here. Uh, green is another good player, but he doesn't play enough to actually rank up. Uh, he likes to show up and watch and backseat drive and theory craft. A lot of the state of the meta is things that he figured out and then the other top players copied. Uh, like these silicon smelters that have uh, sand for mechanical drills coming into them. Uh, he was the first one to do those. Uh, he's also a very tactical player. Uh, he really likes doing rallies that draw units across or behind enemy lines and that kind of thing. Oh, I'm getting attacked again. Well, let's go check on that. There's more qu uh, All right, so quad, crash damage on a container, blows up core, I lose the fort. Uh, that should be an end for me. I do have army in the backfield to pull up. Uh, and I'm just gonna barely be able to salvage this. But Zanzibarzi is paying attention to Dyslexic now and not able to build into this. If he did, I'd probably also be out of the game. Uh, but I managed to just barely get this. And once I open that space up, the whole thing can get rebuilt by the huge raft of polys coming through. And I've got enough resources in the bank that all of this can come back online quickly too. All he is reinforcing his forts. Uh, I do have some army to work with now. Uh, what am I missing? Not comfortable with silicon, huh? Or power. Yes, all right. RTG generator. Uh, yes, it's expensive uh, for, for platinum, but I've got a lot of production for the T4. For phase, uh, I've got a good amount of that bank banked up. Uh, the thing I like about these is you just need 3x3 thorium, and it's a lot of power, comparable to one of those seven diff gen scams. It's also, it's not an option unless you got a ton of polys to help with it. Uh, it'll work decently well, even when partially constructed, which I'm gonna give up on it part way. Uh, a drawback of it is that it takes a long time to get up to full power. But you know, you're building things incrementally too. So it kind of ramps at the, the same rate as you would be otherwise. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could be manually feeding thorium in to get it producing sooner and faster. All right, I'm expecting more quad attacks here, so I want more tsunamis pushing quads away from the good stuff in the middle. And the polys are a useful distraction here. Yeah. All right, so from the map, Zanzibarzi is pushing into dyslexic space, probably doing the kinds of tactical army pulls that Green likes to see and yells about. Uh, in reality, that is putting me on a time limit since if he takes out dyslexic, then that puts me on a quarter of the map versus his three quarters, and that's guaranteed loss. I'll just get outproduced. So I need 
to start putting pressure on him in a way that keeps dyslexic in the game. But first, I need more silicon. More zeniths would be nice, but we need silicon first. Still not enough. Yeah, in the future, if I'm stuck playing dense like this, I should be putting more attention into feeding phase into schematics that have bridges set up to accept it but don't have it yet. Since that is a density increasing move and I'm out of space. Uh, those silicon factories that are off the core, ones with the lead and the sand drills, those can take phase. Uh, that six smelter can take phase. Uh, these power plants can take phase, although there isn't really any Thor nearby to put up the slap together phase gen unless I was pulling it out of that RTG generator. All right, now I'm gonna get tactical. Uh, so I want to get through some of these forts and I've had my unit factories going for a bit. And what I want to do is I want to spread out a line of attack so that instead of one concentrated blob where all of his cyclones will area of effect the entire stream coming in. I want to make a line that perpendicularly goes into his fort. And the thing you got to do for that is make a lot of command centers on rally and spread out into a line and then do the attack from there. Oh. This is a thing that I just started doing recently and I'm pretty happy with the results. All right, he, and without him having shields on these forts, uh, the quads take care of them pretty easily. The zeniths run an interference while I build in behind it, and this will get his attention. Uh, so now he knows he's gotta come up, he's gotta reinforce forts into the space behind this, and he's gotta upgrade the rest of his forts uh, to take care of this army. Uh, I should be running that attack forward as soon as possible, but I can't actually do it because uh, all of those command centers left behind, I'd have to go back and deconstruct them first. So this is more conservative, and in this circumstance, it ends up being too conservative. Uh, that gives him time to upgrade all those forts to much more intimidating. He is rallying down there in the attempt, in the hopes of doing a counterattack on this spot. Uh, but I build up on there pretty strong too. That's not an attack, that's just trying to get them off the command center so I can take them down and reposition them. I'm also worried about power again.
left it on attack. I am building up more units in the backfield and what's left from the army from the previous attack. And the next fort I'm going to target is this one on the corner here. So I'm going to try and build up another line of units. Maybe I should angle it to actually be diagonal and hit that perpendicularly, but this is going to work well enough. This stuff is holding uh, extra insurance against quads with these tsunamis that are pulling from the tanks that are already there. Uh, the, yeah, the choices for that spot are either tsunamis or shields. And I also have a skin that puts in a back line of cyclones behind it. Now with that attack and rally, I'm able to spread out this line a bit more. Uh, that'll take it. Let's go, 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 go. Chew in through there, shield down. All right, uh, stop. Zeniths and quads are running defense since he's got constant attack. When he's got attack left on, then these individual single units wandering in are a big danger of retaking this. If they get that core down and his response and his polys are immediately gonna swoop over and put the whole thing back up. I would love to be able to send this immediately to the right. Uh, that doesn't actually work because he's got forts both above and below and they've all got bait generators in them. So any attack from this point is going to put this half strength army uh, into a fort that it won't be able to handle. So I'm pulling them back to the rally line while uh, trying to build this up. And I'll need to pull in more unit production. That was close. That quad almost crashed on the core. Luckily, this one doesn't have containers in it. Gotta get better about my container discipline. Uh, I should probably be going for phase walls, not plastic walls. He's not doing anything that's uh, shooting lasers. Uh, I do have a same pattern stall schematic that is one row of plast and two rows of phase. That would be better to use here. And since I've got a good amount of phase banked up, that'd be decent. So the next fort that I'm targeting is going to be that one right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, my polys are low. I want more uh, because they are dying in a lot of rebuilding and back and forth across his... Uh, like they are flying in front of his fort and dying too much. So I've got a low poly count and I need to rebuild up. Fifty minutes. So, checking the time there. Uh, this is this game feels long at this point. The thing I'm worried about is that ninety minutes, uh, the the hurry up kicks in, and that prevents the server from getting stuck. Where if a game gets too old, it starts automatically killing cores and setting them to fall in from the outermost ring and moving inward. And that prevents stale games and it makes people hurry up instead of just doing defensive standoffs or taking every core except for one and leaving the server stuck. Uh, it's a stolen from Fortnite or Battle Royale mechanic. The safe zone shrinks and you're forced 
into the middle to actually fight or lose. All right. So now I'm setting to do the lineup to take this fort. That fort is fully built up. Uh, though he doesn't have the overdrive dome in it. And he's not feeding phase into the menders. So it's actually not as strong as it looks. If he had the dome on that, then oh, it'd be real tough to get through. And while I'm doing this, he's probably going the rest of the way through dyslexic, which ends up being uh, what settles the game. In fact, we're, we're getting things decided real close here. I am pretty happy with the size of this army. Good amount of quads. Crash damage is going to carry me. I'm going to be able to get some traction and maybe actually get into his economy if I can get through here. Since I will have... I can like put a command center right in between there and start... Oh, I guess he put some forward. In. Anyway. Shields down, things crash there, and take the fort. But I got almost no army left. Everything died. So, left on attack, stuff is going to keep creeping in. Uh, that quad will save me a little bit. Uh, dying and respawning at my nucleus, that sets me back pretty nasty. Uh, Lots of blocking walls in the way, but not many polys to actually get it up quickly. Like, this is a struggle. And that horizon lands on the container and its bomb and blows it up and blows up the core. And then the whole fort comes back. Uh, I pretty much, that that's a big pivot of the game. I needed to hold that. And I didn't. And I've got no army left, and he is eating his way into dyslexic space. So we're done, pretty much. Uh, and now it's going through the motions of cleanup. Uh, I can put even more defense into my fort and borders. Uh, but if he's going to be, he, he'll just be able to set up production on the other three quarters of the map. Uh, now I actually get a sense of the problem I'm in, and I start shifting to, okay, let's try and get at least some of that extra space. Uh, I can't work on these forts anymore. In fact, the, the previous attack I did probably should have been uh, taking dyslexic space instead. That might have gone a lot better, actually. Uh, but that's not what I did. I might have been able to get half the map versus half the map. I'd probably still lose that since Nancy's a lot better at playing dense and big than I am, but it would have taken longer. And it might have gotten to the, uh, the shrink start hitting, and who knows what would have happened at that point. Uh, we probably would have been exhausted before that point, and somebody would have just given up. That happens sometimes when the games get real big and long. There's no bait in those forts, so I can't take nearly as much space with this as I'd like to. I do get some, but Zanzi's rolling around a lot faster than I can. Uh, I should probably... Dropping some crawler factories here would probably help this out. Uh, but I also need to actually build defenses into the any space that I take which I'll do here, but he's going around enough that this doesn't matter. I'll actually be able to catch some reinforcements with this, but he'll be rallying behind. 
and my my weak point is remains uh, the lighter defenses that I left on the d dyslexic border. Yeah, fix that angle. There we go. Yeah, he doesn't need to even build a fort over there. Uh, he just has to do a command center and, and rally that army that he's been building up. And he can start launching attacks over here. And while those attacks are going and I'm dealing with them, uh, he can be actually putting up defenses behind it. Those quads go crazy. Uh, quad in the backfield guts me out and really puts a cap on things. Forts put out fires. That's nice. Uh, I do have those leftover daggers that will be able to take that back, but uh, I'm low on materials. That's going to run me out of graphite. Uh, Rebuilding entire hexes that you recapture is expensive. Yeah, and while that's happening, he's putting up the big forts. So it takes me four minutes or so to build up enough units to actually take one of those. And I don't have four minutes times those two forts uh, and all the other ones that I need to get through. I needed to take that space and hold it and put up more production. Yeah. Ooh, and I'll be stuck with no titanium either. I'm surprised my power is holding up doing this. Uh, usually you lose some big power connections or a big economy hex and that'll put you in negative power especially since air units tend to go for power plants specifically. Uh, and then you're, you know, you're stuck with no power and that's the end. Uh, but somehow that got rebuilt and it actually worked. And he's gonna do the rally to the left there. And this fort is gonna, you know, catch some free zeniths coming through, but that's not enough to actually work. 
should have built up much more over here, maybe even taken down those poly factories. But I'll see, yeah, I'm out of graphite. I don't have the materials to build up. These things don't need graphite. I can add those. Maybe I should be manipulating my bait gens here to make sure he goes for this middle one. Another thing that I might have done, which would have been a bit more cheeky, is try and get some Lancers on the border there to prevent him from putting the command center as close. Uh, that runs the risk of getting myself polytrapped, but yeah, everything is scrabbling at this point. Uh, shields go down, quads crash on these cores. The thing that really gets me is the crawlers went around the left side uh, and because all the turrets were busy shooting at the zeniths and the crawlers just get to walk up directly to the core, shield doesn't matter, blow it up. And that's my defense is down. I don't have a stream of ground units to put recapture pressure in. Uh, there's no need for building into it at this point. It's the end. Zanzibarzi wins, gets some uh, some progress towards platinum tier player rank. Uh, since we're both titanium tier, that we are peers, and he qualifies for advancement. I'm something like halfway to platinum at this point, so that would be cool. I'll probably be the first player to get platinum tier. A uh, very intentional design in the, uh, the tier uh, design of player ranking is you can't just grind it. You have to actually win games against players that are your peers, and they have to be games where they were trying. Uh, you're, you're counted as trying in a game if you take another core within 10 minutes of the start. And that sort of sets the, the tier of the game and then you have to actually have players that are your same rank or better in that game to get progress towards moving up. Like there are a number of players who grind empty servers or servers full of scrap tier players, uh, empty maps, and you can get a lot of prestige that way, but prestige won't get you player tiers, which are the actual signifier of how dangerous an opponent you are. Yeah, power's gone. I'm giving up soon. Another minute or two. Uh, it is polite when you're beaten to actually do the die command instead of forcing them to grind through any forts that you have left behind. And there it goes. Good game, Zanzibarzi. And a big demonstration of what the biggest and best games on this server actually look like. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no comparison to Team PvP uh, or, or the other hex servers. None of them make games like this.